We actually worked like a team tonight. Yeah, yeah. This is what's cool about it is it always starts looking grim, <laughs> but then yeah, as you guys start to really unload, it just amazes me the versatility and, and the the amount of damage you guys put out just nonstop. Are, are you talking? To, are you talking to your NPCs right now? <laughs> no. Yeah. No yeah. kid, right? <laughs> I can't hit coffee. Graybeard's a machine. I can't hit Finn because he keeps running away. I've got nothing. I can get to Jarl, and I can maybe get to Ian if she doesn't run away, and then that is it. I can't, t I can't lock you guys down. I'm trying so hard. What's interesting about this one, too, is this is a rolled random encounter, right? So one this of the is questions a random I've encounter? this module. Oh, yeah, my yeah. God. With so all these it's one mods? of the things that can happen. Holy yeah. crap. And I keep wondering if in the module they have this chart that I can roll on depending on where it is. And they say, uh, do this, you know, do this, do this. And I have no idea how they know if something's balanced or not. Because it doesn't say in that chart to, hey, bring it down if they're only here. Or put it up if they're here. Or if they have these things, do this. It's just like, here, throw this at them. <laughs> if I roll this number. So I'm like, all Ooh, right, roll the number. I'm like, oh, all right, let's see how this goes. I mean, you have to, you have to think they... They're counting on, you know, wizard wizards and <laughs> sorcerers or a warlock or something with a little bit of AOE action, which, you know, wah, dead mob instead of frightened mob. Just saying. I, I'm, you know, I I was thinking about that as we're in the middle of this battle. Like, if, if this was, if this was like a random encounter, then we could probably, you know, I was thinking the, the option... To run away is there but if i'm looking at the number of enemies that they're throwing at us and i'm thinking well this must be important like I, i'm not thinking that this is random because random usually doesn't come with like 30 enemies <laughs> yeah it felt like a continuation of the giants and the others who knows maybe it is yeah they're um they're a roving band Actually, didn't roll really high. There could have been more of them. I think I had a pretty average roll, but if I would have, if I would have maxed out on the random roll, it could have been more. They have some things that are cool, like the pack tactics is the only thing kind of keeping them in the fight for you guys, even though it still hasn't. It's done some, but not a ton. Uh, no offense to my party, but 23 dudes with pack tactics, I'll take those over, Gregor. <laughs> <laughs> that's just be brutal. He's like, they're like, will you join us, Coffee? And he's like, yes, I will join you. I will lead you. We will destroy the world together. <laughs> Help me kill your leader, and I will take you to glory. It, it didn't help that Finn missed, what, four times? Because that could have been four more guys dead. Yeah. I don't think I even got to attack anybody. Yeah, you moved to engage that dude, and that was it. Yeah. I mean, I, I would have preferred to engage the leader, but I had to pass by that guy. Man. <clears throat> it was interesting having it more spread out because I've gotten used to fighting those um, concentrated enemies. And so it's interesting to look for some of these area of effect spells and try to figure it, try to fit them into what we're doing. Yeah, pretty soon I'm going to have to start targeting you right off. No, 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 no. I'm the unassuming <laughs> one. Yeah, yeah. Because technically, I've got a bunch of guys. If I was metagaming, right, I would go after your squishy people first and ignore your hit point batteries. True. <laughs> but I'm laying in a lot of stuff on your guys that are meant to absorb a lot of stuff. Yeah, which one is our squishy? Me. Charles. <laughs> Charles. Charles, Ian. And Charles, oh, you always throw yourself right into the mass of combat, too. Hey, there's a fire giant. I think I will go toe to toe with it. <laughs> what else am I gonna do though? I, I mean, try. otherwise I'm just running around, just hiding oh, behind know. stuff. I mean, I can't. 
I can't do that. You gotta Charles... take the small groups though, not like the ones with seven in front of them. Well, I so the idea was that I was gonna disengage from the horde that was around us, and I was gonna go take on just the leader. You know, maybe we can take really, the leader out. He only got dropped by two or three guys. Yeah, but each one of them hit me. <laughs> Charles, Charles' weakness is his AC against Lucian's rolling. Yeah, I've got a 17 <laughs> AC. I mean, it's not a bad AC. That's a good AC. Actually. Yeah, and I got actually, hit. Yeah, I critted twice. That that definitely hurt. The two crits on the one one round was bad. It was crazy. But I'm not going to apologize too much because Greybeard freaking does it all the time, so F him. <laughs> <laughs> Damn you, Greybeard. <laughs> Charles needs to take a level of, uh, what is it? Uh, the hell are you, Greybeard? Plate mail? Barbarian. Barbarian to get the damage so reduction. <laughs> <laughs> well, the problem is, oh, Barbarian? Yeah, you don't need to wear armor for that, do you? Nope. So that's my debate. I, you know, I'm I'm kind of hoping that I survive until level six, so that I can, you know, either make a decision to to take that, or to just take two more dexterity, which would increase my AC again. I mean, I could have an 18 AC and a plus four dexterity. You just need more hit points. That's what you need. Uh, and did you, Graybeard, did you figure out what the barbarian was doing? Uh, at first I thought he was hasted, because oh, he was. okay, because I'm like you can't move, you can't get that second dash that's not viable unless he's either a rogue, a monk, or or hasted. So I was I was a little like my nose was tweaked, and I'm like, oh yeah, that guy was casting in the woods, so he threw haste on the barbarian, and then rrr, he came at me. I'm like, oh no, fight smart, fight smart, you know. As as Greybeard, I was trying to be like, oh, how would I fight me? You know? <laughs> yeah, I tried to give you enough clues so that you figured it out. Yep, so thanks. <laughs> jump off, guys. Have a good night. Yeah, you too. see ya. Yep. Night, I do like when stuff happens and you guys are, are mentally tallying it up because you know the rules and something doesn't make sense. You immediately jump to, wait a minute. <laughs> and it's like, no, there's reasons. <laughs> <laughs> It's they my players they'll they'll do and they'll they'll call a rule and I'll be something like I'll say like yes that's weird isn't it hmm you know because they'll be like these things can't do this and then I'm like yeah how strange and then they get you know upset because they're gonna figure it out yeah that's, that's what... <laughs> uh, that was good true. I'm super disappointed in these shaman-like casters. They do not give them very good spells. They should be a lot tougher than they are. No, no direct damage spells, it doesn't seem like. It's all kind of weird stuff. But, And this is the idea. This is kind of that encounter of lots of small things that even though they're, they're regular human size but they're not significant in any way like their armor is low armor class low hit point it's just a lot of them i kind of well, figured yeah, that because they wouldn't throw stuff at us that like could just annihilate us and not have like a and also have a high ac and that's but what's low hit point are we talking like 15 yeah close to that yeah that's still that like I was like oh I'm, maybe I'll use a sleep and then I'm like average roll I only sleep two of them and that's doing it at second I actually level. was worried yeah I was waiting to see yeah I was because I wasn't sure how high you could cast that I thought that was coming uh, the other thing I thought might be coming was the burning hands I don't that would have been coming but I don't have it uh, memorized uh, okay yeah I was waiting to see something like that one because I knew you had it. Um, <laughs> That's still 3D, 3D, uh, that's still 3D6, so that wouldn't take any of them out without a max roll. Yeah, a, a two good rolls, you would get them. Two good D6 rolls, you'd get them. 
Yeah, where's let me go to the thing here where it says random wilderness encounters. It's... So this one. One whilst you're looking real quick, one of the things that, that irked me about this edition is that so they upped all the damage on, you know, that players can dish out, but then they upped all the hit points on everything. Like that first time um, Lucian, we were fighting goblins, and I just railed them for like 11 or 12 points, and you were like, okay. And then you just moved on, and I was like, <laughs> so he, you, I dropped him, right? You know, kind of thing. It was just the weirdest thing to do, like, two-digit numbers on a on a goblin and have it survive. It just freaked me out. <laughs> yeah. I But they, I wouldn't say they're high damage, though. They're still low, but they are in the teens. Yeah. Yep. yeah they're, they're no longer like a, you know, a seven hit point creature or something like that. Yeah, you yeah. can't one hit, move to the next, and take two out per round. Yep. The issue here is how many we can take out each round to just get their numbers in control. Because we yeah, I, I'll be surprised four? if I can get coffee and, and graybeard down. At the end of this battle, I may get a few more down of you, but I, I still do not think I have what it takes to take down coffee and graybeard. Maybe the, Finn, but his, not not with that plate mail anymore, man. I'm everything is, missed him. Is that is that the new bar? You've got to kill half. Yes. The <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, zero, zero that's all I can do. Down. I can't kill all of you. Done. I can only kill okay. half of you. I'm just gonna misty step and hit expeditious retreat and just run around. Yeah. I'm gonna be going yeah. eighty double dash hundred and sixty feet each round. Yeah. That's a good <laughs> idea. <laughs> I'm telling you, you can join this tribe, they'll take you. You can join the elk tribe. No, so this one is, uh, you guys encounter a hostile group of Uthgard Barbarians, consisting of 4d6. And then, depending on if the number's high enough, you get a certain number of other guys and a certain number of other guys to join them. Well, then that's almost, that's a max roll, because there's like 23 of these dudes, right? Well, no, I get I get to roll for how many of the special characters there are. And I could have rolled higher, but I only rolled one for each of them. Oh, uh, I see. Yeah, so I think my roll was a 22. I want to know what the challenge rating is on this thing, because it's massive. I have no idea. It doesn't say like that. It just says roll this many. There is another cool one in here. If it was, uh, it also says, if these Uthgart belong to the Grey Wolf tribe, which they don't, use the werewolf statistics. <laughs> oh, what? Oh, I'm like, oh. yeah, I want that. <laughs> and, and you get to roll 1d6, right? <laughs> and, and the chieftain, he gets 1d4 wolves as companions. Well, at least we could kill the wolves. Um, it would be totally up to the magic users to to take down the werewolves, though. I need magic weapons or silver, right? Yeah. Which that's... we have zero of. Oh. <laughs> I guess the fact yeah. that this is a random encounter kind of makes sense that diplomacy would not work. <laughs> I really wanted the... the uh, I, diplomacy would have worked. Tumor. I think if you had dropped all your stuff, they would let you go. Well, that's not diplomacy, though. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to. We don't want to. Well, what is diplomacy? You just say stop, and they go, "Oh, yeah, okay. We'll we'll just go back to the woods." What negotiation, do you not mean? surrender all your crap. And <laughs> so the last time I was road. like downtown and got mugged, I don't call that diplomacy. <laughs> See, that's banditry. <laughs> Stand and deliver. <laughs> your money or your life, good sir. <laughs> All I'm hearing is Cage the Elephant now. No rest for the wicked. Oh, oh, such a good song. Man. Well, and I could have rolled other stuff. Like, you could have, you actually could have met, you know, non combative things. You could have met friendly things. You could have met some really bad things. There's some bigger things here that I'm, I'm shocked are even on this list. I hope I get to roll them at some point. I wouldn't be shocked <laughs> at this point. 
<laughs> no, no, see, there has to be some kind of balance because every time we open a giant's bag, it's like bucket with rope, you know. So, so it has to be a, we even it out somewhere along. Oh yeah, the and here's the thing: at the the last line of the the barbarian entry, the barbarians carry no treasure. Great. <laughs> I guess we'll be eating barbarian for a while. Yeah, it's just crazy. We're just going to keep reminding you that when you say, why don't you guys just buy some potions? Uh -huh. Buy some potions. Why don't you buy some Charles of those, used uh, one. Didn't help 2D4 plus 2 potions. <laughs> yeah, I rolled a 4 and a 1. <laughs> oh. So I guess it averaged out. That's harsh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, do you guys think you're going to lose this battle, or you think you're going to win it? <laughs> Just from I my experience, I think we're toast, but... <laughs> yeah. It's how quickly uh, Greybeard, Ian, and uh, Finn and Ardrith get over to the You, you still ball. got heavy hitters. I mean, everybody's got attack advantage, right? So... Yeah, that you kills my blur. Heavy eaters. Hitters. Ian, do you do you have another barbed arrow? <laughs> She's like, "F this game, I'm leaving." <laughs> wow, she's just stupid. Back I mean, I keep mentioning it on just kind of casually, but I'm seriously thinking about getting a character ready because <laughs> Charles is <laughs> getting wiped. This one, this was not, this one would hurt. Um, the giant one hurts you because you, you have to get close for you to do your stuff. But man, they're, they're so, they're meant to take on things that are melee, right? Well, that, that's <laughs> why so, I was asking about, you know, will we treat them as like, um, you know, difficult terrain or something? Because, I mean, if they're that big and I can climb on the back of them, then, you know, it's not like they're going to be able to reach around and grab me on their back. I mean, I, I would think I'm dexterous enough to be able to get up there. If I rolled well. Well, well we did find those rules for it. So. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I, yeah. I just keep seeing Tyrion attack me, and there is no way that dude's beating me in a fight. Yeah. I'm going to reach around. I'm going to throw him against the wall. I think if it was or more, if we were playing more anime style, then yeah. But we're, I don't, I don't think we're playing that style of a game. Oh, I wasn't thinking anime. <laughs> I'm just thinking these guys are like 30, 40 feet tall. You know, <clears throat> I should be able to climb up them. I mean, it should be difficult for well, them to reach well, around. Well, right, right. But, but, yeah, true. In, in a fantasy world, you would think, yeah, I could climb up them. But if they're 30 feet tall, you would think your punch wouldn't hurt a 30-foot tall dude. No, but I could get up You would be like Jack and the Beanstalk or something. So it's like things that aren't actually real. <laughs> I could find sense And, in and holding on to something that's actually fighting, I think that would be pretty tough. If he's just standing there, I, I would think you could climb on like a ladder but well, then. <laughs> if he's moving around and running then, like there's no way when he when they move actually towards you you actually have to make a roll just to st stay standing because they're shaking the ground so much so i think yeah it would ha there would have to be a balance to that too right because that tactic you're if i say um yeah, let's go with your tactic. Are you saying at that point the giant can't ever hit you? No, no, no. I just would say it's, it's difficult for him to get... Like, if he's reaching around to try and fling me off his back... Like, if he's engaged with, like, people on his front and I sneak around the back and climb up him... I mean, yeah, he should have an opportunity to grab at me, but it shouldn't be easy. I think it's actually in that section... We can look it up at some point. Can't remember where I read it. <laughs> I know it came up it's somewhere. It's in the DM. It's in the DMG. Yeah. And, and when you when you say not easy, I still think the problem is the way their bonuses are. They're, it's still going to be an easy roll for them. You know mm. what I mean? Because they get a plus eleven to do things like grab somebody. 
I mean, I can't, I can't reach around and scratch my own back in the middle of my back. <laughs> so, I can't imagine it's going to be easy for a giant to, to grab something. Well, tr true, but if something jumped on your back, you don't think you could get it off pretty quick? <laughs> like if a cat or a, a a monkey, a spider monkey or something, I don't know. Well, you would definitely I mean, even make in it a real priority. I, I would or make it a priority. But then, fall pro and I don't have a problem if, if, you know, if he's focused on me to get me off, that, you know, he's now vulnerable to the people attacking him. I mean, that should be a distraction, right? Yeah, but well, there's not really rules to the idea of you're vulnerable if you're attacked by somebody else, right? Because that would have been, like, these guys attacking Greybeard. He, Greybeard's vulnerable because there's three guys around him, or, or well, Coffee's vulnerable because there's six guys around him. There's well, not rules there. Well, they I'm, are, I'm just trying to find ways to be useful. They get, the enemy get advantage on them, so... This case, the pack, but if they were goblins, or, you know, something without pack tactics, it, they yeah. wouldn't. Unless half of them use the help action. Right, yeah, you, there's ways you, but then they give up in action, right? Right. They're giving up yep, something yep. to get something. It's not just, you, like in 3-5, I think we would have done that. Like, if somebody's attacking you from behind, yeah, I thought 3-5 gave you, yeah, gave you flanking advantages. advantage. Yeah, because it's like, hey, your, your attention is being split. Um, yeah, and so that's going to make it harder for you to do things. Plus two of flanking, harder. right? Flanking, yep. The, well, so but, there's there's something called, I think there's an action. I might, is is it help? It might be yes, help. Yes, the help action. I don't but understand why they made that an action though. As a way for somebody who doesn't have a strong attack to help somebody who does. So, like, if I'm a person who's like even really, um, if I can't hit very hard. But I go up where Greybeard's fighting, or somebody who needs advantage. Greybeard has advantage when he wants it. But if I go up to, say, Coffee, and I distract the guy he's fighting, he's going to definitely get those two sword swings that he's trying to hit, and he's going to do pretty good damage because he's a big damage guy. So it's, I would say it's only useful if your attack is not as strong as another guy's attack, and you want to make sure that guy's attack hits. You don't want to leave it up to chance at all. You want to give him advantage so that he lays the axe down or whatever it is. Other than that, yeah, you would take your actions. I wouldn't. I wouldn't waste it on the help. The help action. If I, were, if I were really squirrely about it, I'd grab like a twenty or a ten foot long spear and attack from range, <laughs> you know, with reach or something long, a long weapon. <laughs> and then and then do the help action as my and then you'd be out of the actual fight without getting hit <laughs> but still helping well, until they moved yeah is that is that like a different take on poking the bear <laughs> yes <laughs> yes but it it's a, a functioning poke at the bear it, it's hard man i mean you know you again being being the monk in this module is harsh because you're a bit too squishy hmm. and you you have to be in melee to get your stuff done you know yeah so it's it's it, it, I, not that I don't I, I absolutely I love Jarl he's an amazing character the, the whole diplomacy he's smarter he tries to be you know <laughs> it, 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 it approach things intelligently and we're all like Rawr! <laughs> you know, so, um, <laughs> oh man. Yeah, and it's probably also it's it's a little off-putting because you you have probably one of the I think one of the strongest classes melee-wise is barbarian, but the blade singer twink class <laughs> mm -hmm. is skewing you know the look of what you think oh, I should be equivalent to him. I'm fifth level too. Why am I not his equivalent, you know, in my class? My class sucks compared to him. I think that Blade song, uh, that's a that's a crazy needs balancing class. I think He's it's a little on the over. I think the monk is on the under a little bit. I think Paladin is right in the middle. I think Greybeard's a little bit above that. 
and I think Ian and Ardreth are in the middle because they're supposed to be glass cannons. I mean, there is the idea that there are glass cannons in the game, but that means they're supposed to be given some good damage, but if anything gets near them, they're going to feel it. <laughs> and the monk doesn't fall into that because you're not you're not able to... Like, if they gave the monk more damage, well, so I the risk-reward would be better? If, if I can spend it on dexterity... I mean, I think part of my problem is that I tried to, to start the character like with a I guess I could have you know bought some points or something like that because he only started with a 16 dexterity um, you know that's what I rolled so that's what I went with um, I think I did some distribution on some of the other you know attributes but you know 16 dexterity like every every time it goes up too I think I gain I gain an attack damage because I'm using dexterity as my damage. Oh, model. yeah, yeah. Yeah, the super stat in this edition yeah. is definitely dexterity. So, I mean, if, if I can live long enough, you know, to level 6 or 8, and, you know, I can up dexterity to, like, 18, 20, you know, and then I've got, like, a really good AC. But then you're, like, coffee at that point, because that's what co that's the reason coffee's the way he is, is he got that 20 dex. Yeah. I don't know. I think if he had a 16 dex, what would you be at, Coffee, if you had actually had just a 16 dex? Uh, my AC would be too lower. Yeah. So I'd only be, I'd only have an 18 when I was in Bladesaw. So kind of the equivalent of a, of a plate wearer then at that point. But not the amount of hit points, because your hit dice is pretty low, right? Yeah, I've only got 36 hit points. Once, once they start hitting me, I just die. Yeah, I've got 35. Yeah, so you're like a shield tank almost, but once they're through the shield, that's that's trouble. Yeah, and and, and yeah, <laughs> for surely. <laughs> I do like the image, like if they're writing this book or they're, they're they're doing this movie, that at the end of every one of these battles, when it's all done, coffee looks like he's not been touched. His guard, his clothes are clean. <laughs> <laughs> he's got no scratches on him he's probably not even winded that much and the rest of you are like one eye hanging out you know you're, you're you've been unconscious for an hour and you're getting back up <laughs> i have i have bought multiple sets of clothing because you know because for role-playing things like after the vulture attack where it was just claws and beak and claws and beak and everything <laughs> the next time we got to town i told i was said i'm i'm buying new clothes and then I described my new clothes because I was like, these things have to be shredded, just absolutely shredded. It's like, I always picture GB after a fight. It's like Superman versus Doomsday. And it's just, you know, the Superman is all torn. The S is gone. You know, you're uh, shredded. I always think of you had the Hulk shorts on. Yeah, exactly. That's all that's left. Is and then when you go Hulk exhausted, Man. they look like they're too big for you. <laughs> nice. Good call. Good call. <laughs> oh, man. One thing that swung your way, I've realized, because you've had other battles that have been like this, where, like, the Goblin Cave was very similar, right? There was a lot of goblins. There was pack tactics going on. Um, it was a tough fight for you guys. The thing that swung this time is that, that plate mail and paladin, though. That's a big swing all of a sudden, because now you have three dudes that are super hard to hit. Or you, Greybeard's not hard to hit, but you just got to, with minusing, you know, half damage on everything, it's just so good. Yeah. So now you've got Anna, three solid rocks that, that anchor your team. And then you've got the damage dealers, you know, that are, are trying to, or the versatility people. And I think that's Charles' problem is he needs to be in melee to deal damage. Yeah. Yep. I can't, in fact, all my bonus attacks, I have to, I have to land the first attack. So I can't use an action to not attack. Yeah. Is there the any kind of thing. stuff that's range? Uh, I have a dart. <laughs> <laughs> Shuriken mo Well, it's not the only thing you could use, but that's what you've chosen, right? Well, I, tr I tried to buy some shurikens, but that cost me, like, my life. <laughs> but that's, that's like darts, though, too. I mean, the damage on those are small. You need yeah. that bow weapon from uh, Rogue One that that monkey is using. <laughs> <laughs> because like the fight would be a little different for Jarl, let's say if you guys are still in the thing. Like if he's up here next to Ian, I can jump over. 
that's a different fight for that's that's a way different fight happening if, if somehow Jarl is there taking on the stragglers that are getting to the glass cannon guys right so if you're you're positioned here to make sure that when they engage your glass cannons you're taking them out now it might mean a round or two you haven't done something because you didn't run straight forward but it might work out where because it only seems like ones or twos get to your back crew and that's that's the people Jarl just needs to jump on and just wreck and that keeps these guys from having to move or do anything but just lay in damage versus coming down here to try to fight like toe to toe with coffee it seemed like that's going to be a bad situation and I was thinking of it because you your character class is a little bit like me um, like how I was going to try to play my warlock if he went packed of the blade so mm. he was going to be a, he was going to be able to assassinate one guy, but couldn't do anything if there was like a bunch of guys. And I feel like uh, Jarl is a is a single target dude because you, you what can you do? You can do two attacks, flurry a blow. That's two more attacks, right? Yep. And then anything else, or is that the most you can get in one turn? Four attacks. Uh, four. Flurry blows and then you can add two. like I think it's four. I think I get another attack um, at another level. I think so. It's, yeah, it's four and, right and now. Spending key, you can do other things like the stunning strike or some of those other things. I don't know what they are. <laughs> stunning strike. I've tried like four or five times, and it hasn't worked any of those times. But four attacks on one guy—that's pretty good. That's that's what led him to try to do what he was doing, which yeah, was yeah. To try to take well, out the leader. Yeah, and I think I would have done the same thing originally. Like I'd be in at first, you're thinking, "Hey, I've got these attacks. I got a bunch of them. Let me just get into the fight." But like, you, I think everybody's realizing is that wait a minute, what I need to do is like, how do I get four attacks on one dude and put myself <laughs> not in danger? Instead of saying like, "I see four dudes, I'm going to go down and put, you know, my four attacks on four dudes or whatever it might be." Yeah, I definitely. That's. That's not how I would approach it. I'm always trying to engage like one guy and pick off one here and there. Yeah, I think that's how I think I would have done the same thing you started with, but I think now seeing how that class plays and the way you've kind of built this guy, I would definitely be adjusting the way I would have thought. Because in your head, you think, you know, you, you're probably, th I, I don't know, what what is your image of Jarl? What is he based off of? Is he like Naratu or is he, uh, you know, what's what's the guy that he's like? in your head <laughs> it's a mishmash <laughs> uh, in but my mind he's wise. wearing a red shirt but combat wise. yes <laughs> <laughs> right now that's the reality well he's but got the pointy what... ears <laughs> yeah I mean he's not we're not seeing Bruce Lee right that's, I think that's what we're saying I, I'm kind of thinking the guy from um oh they call me Badlands. The Badlands. Oh yeah, that dude walks oh, into yeah, like yeah. a ton of guys and wipes the them color. Out. Oh yeah, God yeah. Or no, Cutter. What do they call him? Yeah, Cutters. Yeah. Cutters. And his what's his name? His he's got a goofy name too, like Baby or. Yeah, Babe. I think <laughs> it is. It's, it's something like that. I, I know what you're talking about. I like that's. I don't. You know, I, my mentality is not to go rushing into like a crowd of people, but you know I. I kind of envision him having that sort of dexterity, you know, to kind of do the things that he does. But I don't, I don't think it translates you know to D and D. I think if you if you had the twenty dexterity, then I think you're that guy. I just need to survive long enough to level eight. Yeah. Well, and it's it's either here's his options: move in, flurry of blows, and just you know, rail who he's attacking, or come in. Bam, bam, two punches, disengage, and get the heck out of dodge. You know, I mean, you you gotta, you kind of gotta choose one or the other with the monk. Well, you do have a forty move. That's See, what I'm I would, what, I would, uh, I think a good feat with that is the what's the mobility? one? That, and I do yeah, have mobility. luck. Mobility. I do have luck. Because that would make you move fifty. You could attack and move out without attacks of opportunity. Yep. Mobility? Really? Yeah, it's yeah. badass. Gives you 10 feet of uh, movement, and if you hit a target or attack a target, uh, they they don't get a, an opportunity attack on you. 
So you would be able to flurry of blows and still get the heck out of that. And you could just move where you want based on that. You go to one guy, attack him so he can't, uh, you know, opportunity you, and then go right by him to the next place you want to be. So I can, Ooh, it's like a, a built-in disengage? Yeah. Yep. With an wow. attack. The rogue gnome in my home, in the house elf campaign, he he just picked that up, and yeah, he loves it. <laughs> that could be cool. Yeah, I, I wish I'd have thought about the luck thing, because the PB pointed it out in the chat. Like, I could have had them re-roll their, their attacks. Oh, yeah, yeah. But only That's... one one of them, right? Right, yeah. well, and, and I've only got three luck, so... <laughs> I mean, it's not... I probably would have been better served to use that on the attack, but, you know, I didn't realize I was going to die before I even got there. Mobile. You need mobile. I'll look into that. That sounds like a really interesting... That, that would have helped me. Because I was worried about yeah. this dude, you know, right next to me. Um, you know, it would have been great to just kind of... <laughs> kind of sideswipe him and keep going. Yeah, that's the key. Just hit one and keep going. Because I think all you have to do is attack. I don't think you have to hit. Hmm. Yeah, and if I if I do end up hitting him, then I can definitely use my flurry of blows on the you know, the next one that I was trying to get to. And it would probably work really good with your key points to be able to. Because don't you, if you spend key, you can do extra stuff. Yeah. Or like that's. How does Jarl the... get blur? Because if he can get blur, well, you'd have to multi class. Well, that's yeah, what coffee. Problem is, the problem is, the second. It's a second level wizard spell. Oh, so you'd have to have uh, plenty more wizard. Levels yeah, you have to be at least third level. Uh, and then some monk. Yeah, and it's. What it's about on sorcerer? Self. Can you get blur and sorcerer? Uh, I think so, but again, you'd have to be third. third. See, I, I, I don't know if, I've never thought, I don't think I want to multi-class him. If if there was to be a multi class, it'd probably be barbarian. And the problem is, if you get hit, then you gotta have concentration to keep it up. So yeah. you can lose your blur with one shot. Hmm. So taking three levels to get it, where it can be dropped. Yeah. I think it'd be better just keeping it in a month. But I'll definitely oh, look cool. into that mobility thing. That sounds pretty cool. The only problem with that is that it keeps me from adding to my dexterity. And what did luck give you? Wasn't that a feat? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I could have 18 dexterity right now, but I spent it on luck. Because I, I couldn't hit anything. For three luck points? Well, if you want to rethink that decision... Yes. I'm not. Um, I'm not opposed on it, for you on. saying. Yeah, yeah. Luck's not working out the way I thought it was gonna, and I want to go a different way. I don't think I'm it's not, necessarily not, not working out. I think it's more. <laughs> I think part of it is I didn't realize that I could use it on attacks against me. So now that I know that, maybe I can utilize it a little better. I mean, I haven't. It, it's not the luck that's the problem. It's it's that, you know, it's the damage that I do <laughs> when I hit. It's not that much. Well, right, but I'm saying if you don't have that feat, is there another feat that if you traded it, you would get to where you want to be? Like, is there something that is going to give you more damage? Or is there something that is going to give you survivability, like that mobility choice, you know? I mean, it might be something just to look at to say what yeah, gets you closer to the Badlands guy. Yeah. Cause that just so you're having have fun. Cause if, I mean, if you're not having fun... We can just, we, next town, Drow can say, I'm ready to be a scholar, and you can go to a class that you are having fun with, because I don't want you not to have fun, you know, spend a ton of time. <laughs> if it gets to where I'm not having fun, I'll re roll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I want it to be fun for the, yeah, I want the character to be cool and fun for you. Yeah, let me, I'll, I'll think about it. I, there's, I, I think a lot we, of We already is... kind of retconned him already, too, yeah. right? Because we... Well, I, I think that was why I took luck. Be was because of that. And then we retconned, I think, after that, wasn't it? Or maybe I just kept it? Cause after oh, you, that's right. You took luck because of the disadvantage with the sun stuff. Right. 
even worse. Yeah, which, yeah, so, because last battle was at night, this battle is during the day. So you would have had that same problem that you would have hated. Yeah, so you took that to deal with the. Uh, yeah, I think I took that before we changed it. Yeah, so Brett comment. <laughs> I just hate doing that. Let me let me think about it sometime through the week. It's either that or you die to black pudding. Those are the two choices. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we do it in this game. <laughs> That's how we roll. All characters die to black pudding. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's like a, whatever a black pudding attacks you, you're like, oh, who wants a new character? Yep. <laughs> You just carry falls randomly it. on top of them. Yeah, well, I was going to say, we carry a, like a globe with a pin on it. Ching, ching, it should always hole. be the, the same uh, black pudding that named whatever the Treebeard called it. <laughs> oh, the, the the goddess of uh, puddings. Uh, what, yeah. what I want is like, I want a black pudding mm, inside a bag of holding. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Just throw that on. So. Uh, you can only hold one in there for about 10 minutes, though. Do they need air? They do need air. Ah. Are you sure black pudding needs I'm air? I'm pretty sure. Because I I think it back <laughs> in the there day... there pudding? We, Why would pudding well, breathe? I think we I think we went through this ages past. Because somebody, somebody's <laughs> bag of holding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was the green slime and, you know, yeah, we've tried Yellow it. mold. <laughs> Everything just all in one big bag. <laughs> bag and whoosh, 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 mix it all together. Um, exactly. He just catapulted over the <laughs> wall. And it all fits. Even a gelatinous cube, you know, oh can squish God, down coffee. into the two foot awesome by idea. two foot. <laughs> well, the next was... time I siege a town, they're going to be throwing yellow molds and green slimes and black puddings over the wall. That's yeah. the uh, the kobolds in the, in the House Elf campaign. That's so good. They have a, they have a dirigible, and they're going to drop pots with rot grubs and green slime and whatnot, these sealed pots. They're gonna push off the the thing to to attack the town with as they fly over in their that's, balloon. That's a great like that's like a great quest line for a module would be like you have to go out and gather that stuff for a siege. <laughs> so yeah. how do you like gather capture those things without killing them? The sphere spell, uh, resolute spear, or sphere. Um, yeah, that's a classic. You fill, fill. Oh, I can't remember the name of the spell. It's something, something. Command, some... Could you command them to get into a jar? Hmm, maybe. Ooh, how about this? How about oh. little stasis, little stasis bottles. Well, that's that sphere spell. You can seal them in, but you could uh, control monster. Oh, that's another one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To get them into said container beforehand. Are any What's of those the... like low level though? So you could have like the low level guys going out and gathering yellow molds and. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> they could have like a ring or a wand, that re particularly in fifth edition because it recharges. Um, or just like catapult a rust monster into like old phalanx of dude. <laughs> have fun with your armor. <laughs> Nothing for scares off a dwarven brigade like a rust monster. <laughs> <laughs> Even their underwear has iron in it. Exactly. <laughs> oh, that would be a great little comic of like all these naked dwarves running away from the battle with the <laughs> monster. Well, that's the the classic in uh, I think it's the original uh, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons DMG. They there's a guy in full plate mail in the wizard's arms, like he had jumped up there because there's a rust <laughs> monster. Great little cartoon. Oh my god! Did PB uh, make it back? PB. Hey. So, what would you think of the uh, backseat driving Jarl? It was fine. It wasn't. The only thing is that I accidentally rolled a couple of times from my sheet instead of his. I wouldn't have affected the roll. It was still a really shit roll. But um, <laughs> other than that, no, it wasn't a big deal. I knew enough about the. Uh, about oh, the that is the picture. Classic. <laughs> nice. 
Yeah, no, it was fine. It wasn't an added burden or anything. Maybe trying to decide what he would do with a little bit. Well, of yeah, because I was wondering because you didn't play him during the combat, right? You played him just during the RP part. Yeah. But no, apparently I know his character sheet better than he does. That might so. be true. Uh, it might have gone better for him. <laughs> Everybody needs a designated uh, dr uh, driver if they're not there. Yeah. Who knows how your character is. <laughs> navigator. <laughs> yeah, because we had a hard time with coffee because we couldn't decide what your freaking AC was. Because it doesn't show, like, when you're all juiced up, what, you, what are you at? It doesn't show anywhere on your character sheet. You, have to, oh, you yeah. just have to know it. Yep. Too high to hit. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we came up with. It was like, ah, probably doesn't it. It, probably it just it. it just says his normal AC, and then it says, no, -uh. um, <laughs> you know. Mine actually changed. I've actually got the it's formula right on mine, but it when I looked at it, if you actually just look at the AC box, it says fifteen, but the calculation is seventeen. I had to actually unset the custom AC and reset it again. Mine says to uh, check with MC Hammer. <laughs> Can't touch this. Oh man. Nice. It was funny too because I was talking to Finn earlier today and we were like, where are we going to get to? Because I'm trying to plan another piece that's coming up. And I thought for sure we were going to race through it and get there. And then all of a sudden this session took way longer than I thought again. And here we are halfway through the battle and we had to call it. It's so hard to judge time with you guys. I never know what you're doing. There's a you had a lot of moving parts in this battle. Well, even getting to this battle, we spent an hour and a half before we got there. I thought for sure, because like last week we had this big discussion about it kind of dragged on. So let's just let's just do a, a movement montage. So I was ready for that today, and then everybody wanted to stop at every end on the way this time. And I was like, oh, okay, we'll, we'll play that out. <laughs> I won't discourage it. But I thought we were doing movement montages. <laughs> and I, think, I think we were like, well, he keeps putting this stuff out here, so we better look at some yeah. of that. You know, yeah, he does all this after. work. Yeah. What? I listened to what you guys said, so I'm like, okay, win. I'm going to do I'm gonna do what they said. We appreciate it. That's funny. <laughs> this this is I, I hope when they come out with the next module is that they they kind of optimize it for virtual tabletops because <laughs> this is like I, I can't even imagine how bad it is for a DM for this module I mean this is the worst every battle is like 30 or 40 moving parts well that's sort this, of the point isn't it it's this like is, war yeah this is an epic module it uh, really is. Agreed, but I'm just saying that, you know, when <clears throat> when you're trying to do this on a virtual tabletop, which is kind of the direction I think a lot of, you know, games are going, like, having to move 40 pieces around, like, it's, it's one thing if you're sitting at a table and it's just kind of all theater of the mind, but once you start playing with tokens and things and you kind of have, you know, these maps yeah, that, where you... that slows everything down. It, it does. And I, I don't even, I don't know how you keep track of it. I have problems with 10 people, <laughs> with 10 mobs. I can't imagine doing 20 or 30. Yeah. The, the big thing that I'm seeing is, is every, it, everybody gets over tactical, right? But when it's theater of the mind, we just kind of say like, you know, there's, there's 20 guys in front of you. I shoot, you know, a couple guys that are running at me. Okay couple guys go down and you know we kind of start talking about it but when you can see the actual squares you guys are spending a whole bunch of time thinking okay do I go around the left side do I go on the right side do I go this way and I'm thinking about the same thing like where do I go how do I move all these guys this one way how I gotta you know there's just so much tactically when you throw a map down and you put miniatures on it it would be too easy with this many figures though in theater of the mind for you to suddenly just swarm everyone you know, it, it really would be, you know, you'd be like, okay, uh, all right, PV, this time, now there's six of them around you and they, they soccer stomp you, you know, it, it just, <laughs> it would be really, really hard to do theater of the mind, I think, with, with this many figs on the, uh, on the table. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I mean, it's. You know, when when there's big battles, and I think you do need to kind of have the tokens, but I, I don't know. I, <laughs> I just get the feeling that, like, every battle we're in, like, we haven't really gotten into any of the war part of it, but it's like every battle we've been in seems to be, like, 
two dozen, you know, enemies. Well, that's that's the only thing that can challenge you guys. Like one, if like I sent two things at you, it doesn't challenge you guys. True. I guess. That's I don't know. I, I I would kind of like to have a battle that's kind of like the the trolls that we faced. <laughs> you know, right? That was like two you, things you know, you're gonna and, yeah, finish no the battle, problem. or you should finish the battle before the three hours is up. <laughs> Because a lot of yeah, these are going like over two two different sessions, just because they're so yeah, huge. It's, it's the nature. The and you have and, seven people, that's what's gonna happen. And we're mid level. It's just it's gonna, yeah. It and it's. Well, we have six players. Yeah. That yep. that a, that absolutely slows it. It, it does. We're, we're it doing does. the four player in the other one, and those battles are, are quicker. They're dying quicker. <laughs> no, they're just they're just everything's happening at so once. So the four are people. better than us, is what you're saying. <laughs> but six people. That's a lot of people <laughs> to go through, and then you know, so seven really. Me is the seven. Yeah. No, I, I, I get you. You're right. Or even like in our on our Numenera ones, it was the same way. But I have a I, I played it with a group of six in the Numenera, and the battle took the entire session. Whereas we played that Numenera and we were able to do RP in two battles because we had four players. And when I ran something similar with six players, it took us three hours just to do one battle. It gets weird exponentially. I probably shouldn't be complaining since I missed last week. <laughs> Every player's right to complain. <laughs> every DM's right to tell them they don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> it's every, it's the DM's right to tell you to stop whining. So. Yep. <laughs> Smack them down. <laughs> get, 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 the, get, get a coach whistle. <laughs> I'm going to DM splain you. <laughs> yep. Oh, it's a thankless job. So uh, I'll officially say it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. What's what's Thank killing you. me is having what? to make maps that I'm happy with to give you guys enough room to do stuff. Because all the maps that are out there that you could just grab, they're all like fifty foot maps, or you know, there's like hardly <laughs> any room. There's no room for the the longbow to be firing, you know, three hundred feet away. So I'm trying to make maps that feel bigger, but it just takes a bunch of time. And then it's like like this one, you know, throw 22 tokens on there. <laughs> I have five character sheets up because there's five different types of things. And th th the other problem I'm having still is I'm trying to keep Discord up. I'm trying to keep the OBS window up because I'm doing scene switching and muting mic and unmuting mic at certain times. But I also have the six screens of the characters to run. And on my other monitor, things keep getting over the top of something else. So it keeps adding two seconds here, five seconds there, 20 seconds here for me to switch windows around again. It's like I need five monitors or something to play this goddamn <laughs> game. Whereas like our Thursday night, I'm not having as much of that problem because I can just have the my left, my right monitor is just character sheets. It's nothing else. I don't have to have anything else over there, which is nice. It's it's tough. First world problem, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, again, I feel you. I, I, had the same, I had the same issues when I was doing the other campaign, but <laughs> you got it like doubly worse because of all the freaking tokens you got to keep track of. So this one's big. I echo and it's reverb. wide open. It's so open ended too. That's the big. That's the crazy thing. Like I, I showed uh, those guys a screenshot of the chapter list. Mm -hmm. And so like we're on chapter three, and then it has this this line for locations, and then location A has six entries location b six entries location c's anything that starts with a c seven entries location d this is just chapter three <laughs> and you can go to any one at any, at, at any point you guys could travel to these things 
and I'm like, I'm having to figure out which ones you might go to so that I know... Like, I had no idea you were going to stop at... Uh... Let me go back to the map. I forgot the name of it already. Because I thought for sure you guys would just pass it by. I thought, I don't even have to read that text. They're not going there. And you guys are like, yeah, let's head north. Let's go to Olsten's Hole. All right, let's go there. <laughs> let's do that. <laughs> And it worked out because actually I, I was able to weave in some more information for you guys that I think is useful, but I had no idea that's where you were going. I thought for sure you guys would go to Everland. I thought we'd get to Everland tonight, or we were going to get to this battle quicker. I think we were going to end it, and then we'd have we'd still have enough time to get you up to Everland, and then maybe to Silvery Moon, which is where I think you're going next. But it worked out differently because we spent a little bit more time in Noenar's Hold, we spent time in Oliston's hold, and then we got to the battle. Well, anyway, you, you you put it. It was it was a good session. No, oh, that was fun. It's an epic battle. I, you guys are gonna win it. It's gonna be an epic battle. You'll win it. You'll get through that. And then I think we're going to try to get you guys to Felbar by next session. That's my goal. Somehow, <laughs> some way. Next. Maybe I have to bring the flying uh, castle back just to pick you up and <laughs> get on. You're not moving <laughs> quick enough. <laughs> Times are running out to get in the castle. You were supposed to be here on the 5th. <laughs> yeah. According to prophecy. <laughs> You have but two days. I have seen the future. That's a fun Come, come with you, me if you want to live. Yeah, uh, you guys got more stuff on Evermores, so that's starting to that's starting to become a question mark in the storyline. Um, there's been some some hints I've given out. I don't know if you guys have picked up on yet. We'll have to see. Did you guys, and, and another thing you guys didn't do this time at the beginning of the session, which surprised me, is to do a quick recap or talk of what quests you actually have and where mm. are they in relation to where we're going and what are we going to pass on the way? Well, because it's fairly straightforward. There's the Weevil up in God knows where, north of Tribor. We have the Harper thing, which is in Everland, which is on the way to Castle Falbar, Felbar. And uh, we have the thing in the Desert Valley or whatever it was called. No, it's not Desert Valley. The other thing. And we dropped Tribor. off the saddles. Yeah, we dropped off the saddles. That's that's all we have. I know. I'm keeping track. <laughs> There's a whole Google Doc about it. Mm -hmm. Like, and... we have personal quests, I'm sure, but we don't have quest quests other than, I guess, the thing our little nightstone that's not the nightstone part of the big bad thing like i guess we could deal with that yeah. you guys have, yeah that that was funny too yeah that uh, that's kind of what i was alluding to a little bit because it was that has consumed two sessions before this and then mm. it was like nobody even thought of it this session at all it was like it wasn't a factor not even oh. a thought or discussion well i think that I again gb wouldn't but i think pb and finn are thinking about it and they're like, we got to keep moving. We can't stay anywhere more than a single night. You know. Well, because we have the stupid mission to go drop off a stupid dead body in the middle of fucking north nowhere. I, like, we can't You guys are anything. thinking about that entirely wrong. It's not dropping off a body. It's going to see an entire race of master metalsmiths to talk to us about this artifact. I mean, if it works out that way. <laughs> and get magic weapons. Be done. And get a magic weapon. <laughs> If we don't die on the way, but like water deep, so out of the way to go back there and now. The dwarven brass knuckles for, for monks. <laughs> well, and there were there were two chances for that thing not to be your guys' worry. Yes, but you you took it upon you know you you guys said no, we'll keep it. So you are shouldering that responsibility, and it is wearing on the group for sure. Yep. It's just like the Horcrux that Harry, Hermione, and Ron had around their neck and made them think bad thoughts. It's exactly what we have with us right now. And actually, the, you gained two of those act. rods, and you guys yes. talked much about that. 
Yeah, we do have two of those rods at this point. Yeah. No, I, I thought you were talking about Nod. Nod. No. no. <laughs> that was a joke. Never mind. <laughs> hey, you have to have one every session. Now, earlier, uh, <laughs> uh, Tigre tried to cover for you with a Captain and Tennille reference. <laughs> and I, I was like... <gasps> MC Colonel represent, you know, so. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, Captain Antonio. Half of the people in the channel don't even know who that is. I know, that's why it was beautiful. <laughs> it was so beautiful when T Gray said it. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> Every Friday night, it was that horrible variety show. And muskrat love. Yeah. <laughs> I, th I think, Ian, you need to uh, decide where your village is by next session, too. Well, I gave a vague direction. It was east. <laughs> it was close by and east of the Star Mountains. Is that what they're called? Star Mounts. Star Mounts. Mountains. That's... Uh... I think that's where I originally thought I was from, like somewhere from that general area. And it's a made up village because it's the high force is so sparsely named. Yeah. So, I know the name of my village. It's, if that helps. <laughs> it will when you deliver your message. Or when you package your message to, to deliver it. Yeah. And the second one. Yeah, the second one. Let's see. Yes, yeah, Star Mount. I guess maybe south of Kars. I don't know. I'll think about it. It's somewhere in that general area. I'm sure. On the Unicorn Run River? <laughs> maybe. maybe. It's somewhere between the Unicorn Run River and the non named river. Yeah, there's one that's somewhere not named, that. yeah. Not super close to the mountains because apparently they're very dangerous. But not super close to the edge. It's like it's like playing clue. It's like, do I want it near here? No, not you. Over here? Not you. I'm still playing that game. Did we learn anything else from the Captain Brendel? Other than the fact that there were a bunch of orcs, giants, and trolls heading south from the moors? Mm, I mean, I, I kind of put out some tertiary information. But, you know, I didn't try to be super specific. It was more, what are you going to glean from what you were told? But there are hints laced in what I said. So glad that was the moment I had to, I had to worry about something else before coming back. So glad. <laughs> Usually yeah. I pay so much attention to every word you're saying, but it never leads to anything. And I'm just like, well, I'm glad I listened, but I didn't really learn much. <laughs> and the one time I need to listen to every word. <laughs> <laughs> no, you have to listen to all my words. And I think that's all we learned in all of this. Well, and some of it, sometimes it's it's reinforcing something that's already been told to you. I do do that at times too. So it's not like everything you hear is some new piece of information you've never had. There are times where I'm trying to reinforce it just in case. Maybe when I said it, I can't, because I don't know when you guys get a hint or you don't, right? Mm -hmm. It's not always clear to me if... I don't see your faces like when I'm talking. So well, I guess I could if I turned the thing on, but it was like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't get that recognition of, oh, okay, they're, they're, they're picking up what I'm putting down. So sometimes I do try to reiterate. And I think a lot of her information was stuff you've heard, but it was to reiterate it to make, to make sure you guys say, okay, there's something there. There's a nugget of something, but do we care or do we want to know about it or what? Or do we just ignore it? I just really wish we didn't have this body with us. You say the stone is a burden, and this stupid body is a burden. <laughs> I'm just like, I want to stop everywhere and see everything. Well, you just have to do it on the return trip. 
<laughs> Think of it that way. Do the return trip is the sightseeing trip. I yeah, guess. you you got to get to you got to get to grandma's funeral, but since you have to go to upstate New York, you might as well, you know, hit everything on the way back. I think we make our way back this. Way. I would still hit the Tim Hortons as I'm driving up there. Nice, good call. Yep. Oh. <laughs> if there was a Whataburger, I'd hit that one too on the way up. <laughs> Dude, I would hate you right now if there wasn't cheesecake in my fridge. So I'd be like, I'm going to go to Tim Hortons at, you know, 1130 at night. At least you can go there. Can I got you? none in my area, man. I got to go oh. to Jersey to get one. Oh, man. That's like three hours. Nothing the, of value was lost. The Canadian invasion. Um, the only silver lining is that they sell the K-Cups at Wegmans over here. Hmm. Nice. It's not the same, though. <laughs> That's all the information you missed, Jarl. Or at least everything that I wrote down. Cool. Thank you. <clears throat> I mean, that first, the first part was all you, though. I, I searched for that information all through your character. <laughs> <laughs> like, I really want to ask this I need to flesh out that, word, that Google Doc. I really need to work on that. On Yarl? Yeah. I started a Google Doc I... to put all that stuff on there, but I, I haven't updated it. I've tried very hard. I No, I did. I didn't read anything about you on your page. I accept your flaws and some of those things that we already knew. That's just right. So there's, I could decide there's not how much to there. <laughs> <laughs> well, just in case, because I was like... Because I did see a piece of information that I didn't know, and now I'm trying to forget. Because I don't want to know that information, as Ian. I'm going to glean it from your actions, not from... <laughs> you mean that line that says, Jarl hates Ian? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It I was, mean, uh, I mean... <laughs> there was something else, and now, now I'm just the like... The one that oh, says he's secretly you know. plotting against the group. <laughs> Do what I wish. I hope someone drops one of those Easter eggs in there on their paper. Been a bad guy the whole time. An <laughs> Arthur's paper. Be like, I knew he was a werewolf. I knew it. <laughs> Somebody's got to be right. Yeah. If it's not me, it has to be them. Well, then I guess then who's the vampire? Jarl? Oh, there's somebody. <laughs> Look, just because I got red eyes. <laughs> oh my god, it was not the whole time. Bum, bum, bum. I'm you so old. I'm suspicious. Well, you know I'm plotting. <laughs> <laughs> I would love that. Does Nod have his own backstory? No, he's got nothing. He's gonna have he's a front story. That's right. He was just a, a wee unintelligent fay before he uh, got summoned. <laughs> Is it a long story or a short story? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm so... You know, the person I don't know too much about, though, is freaking Coffee. I know fuck all about him. Yeah, Tigray's still on? Well, Tigre's backstory. There was a black pudding. <laughs> <laughs> it died with the character you killed. <laughs> Jerk. It's dead to me. My backstory haunts Greybeard. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Oh, give me a oh my god, if you could like somehow circle that back into your backstory as Coffee take, I don't know, a level of Warlock or something. Yeah, no, no, no. He's he, he's going to come back as a uh, Draco Lich. He's going to come up to Coffee and say, I was, I am your father. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what? Coffee's yeah. like, no! no! Cuts off his hand. Oh. Yeah, I was going to say, suddenly his hand's gone. <laughs> That'd be great if there was a ghost that came back as Tigre. 
the ghost oh. of Tigre. Oh, don't you worry. guys don't hear the whispers. I get them all the time. Don't so. worry. <laughs> yeah, I like how you guys buried him like right next to the guy that wants to use him against his party. <laughs> the evil tribe of necromancer. There, there are things afoot. <laughs> so I wanted to burn your body, but I respected... Uh, Finn? Finn's other character, yeah, his wishes. Or in Finn's, I guess Finn's wishes. The druid. Yeah. yeah. Armel. Armel. Yeah, I'm gonna, who, I, who Armel left? Armel's on his own arc. Who left? <laughs> Armel he was is on summoned back to home base. He's on the Anakin arc. He's turning evil. <laughs> Anakin, no. They've like killed his family, and the, and the rage just gets to him. And he goes, evil druid. <laughs> So I have a question, just and I I, th I think we've all asked this at some point, but just to clarify, if we do end up in a situation where we have to re-roll, since we're now like all level five, where would we start? Would we start at zero, or would we start at five? <clears throat> hmm. I think what I had done, because those guys were three. Four. Yeah, I know you did a side thing with them, but I, <laughs> I mean, if we're gonna re-roll, I, I wouldn't want to have a side thing to go all the way to level five. Yeah, yeah, and I don't think uh, it will be. It certainly won't be a level one character because that just would not make sense. Um, I think I'm gonna do it kind of like the Adventure League does, where there's, there's thresholds. So there's like, you know, one to four. Had you died, it would be back to the lower level one. But then from five, then it, the cutoff would be five. But if they get to six, then it'd probably be bringing in a five. It probably just depends where we're at in the, in the module, what I'm going to do. I'll have to so look die at now, Jarl. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not planning on it, but... <laughs> oh, wait, you're already halfway there. I know, right? You're three year olds away. Just let I... me roll for you. I mean, I thought I was at negative 17, and then I, I didn't realize that this savage band of ruffians was going to let us live. I the mean, question is, for live. what? Yeah. Right. Terms. They like their meat fresh, maybe. Oh, now, now you guys are metagaming. <laughs> <laughs> it's easier. I mean, the Aztecs used to walk all their slaves, I mean, their uh, captives back, right? Yeah. Make him walk up the pyramid. You don't have to carry him. Well, every good D and D adventure has the prison scene, right? Where all the characters are in prison with nothing, and they have to break out. I break out. I want to. I want to see like a, a real <laughs> nice. prison scene D and D. Everybody leaves with like less fingers than they came in. You guys are sent to Oz. permanent permanent limbs <laughs> from beating. Oh, come on now. We all know GB would be like Yellowbeard. <laughs> what? <laughs> no one was supposed to live in prison for 20 years. <laughs> right then. <laughs> Is that from Legend? No, it's from Yellowbeard. Oh, <laughs> I'm thinking of like the, <laughs> the little dwarf in Legend that turned into like one of the goblins' friends or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no. That's the best thing you've ever said, Great Beard. <laughs> no, it's from Yellowbeard. Yellowbeard. <laughs> What's that movie called, Yellowbeard? It's the one I'm thinking of. It's the one oh, with Yellow, Marty Feldman Yellow in Beard. it, right? It's awesome. It's all the Monty Python guys. Yeah. And yeah. Ch Ch Chong. But Marty um, Marty Feldman was Yellowbeard, wasn't he? No, no. Marty Feldman was the uh, the uh, Sneed uh, character. Um, he did die making that movie, though. Yeah, yeah. And oh, man. He's, uh, he was the, the Igor to the, the bad guy, the Captain Hook character. Ah, uh, okay. No. It's been so long since I've seen that movie. Every time no, I hear Yellowbeard, I immediately think of Marty Feldman. <laughs> it's the best. Oh my god, I love that movie. I love them. I watch that movie like once a year because there's they want to dress up in disguises and it's you know they've got this pirate Yellowbeard and they're they're trying to give him a disguise name and they're they're like <laughs> you know Professor Plant 
Professor Death. And they're like, Professor Tree, Professor Rape, you know? <laughs> and then they're like, how about Professor Anthrax? Oh, I like that one, you know? it's. <laughs> oh, I remember God. that line, too. <laughs> this oh, is who kills me every time. I might have to rewatch that. I wonder if it's on Netflix. Use your dagger, Dan. Um, yeah, there's just so many good lines for them. Anyway. All right, well, it's a school night. I think I better head out. <sighs> school. Well, work night. School totally night. on vacation. Me too. So Me much. too. Oh, jealous. Jealous. Whoop, whoop. Just had my birthday last week, and now it's vacation time. Oh yeah. Professor Axe Beak. So <laughs> In chat. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. There were some good shirt ideas. That gnome head, whoever... Was it Coffee that drew that? Or Tigre? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you could put that gnome head on a shirt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the gnome head could be saying, Hey, I got a 13 AC, bitch. <laughs> That's the best. <laughs> Bitch, I got a 13 AC. <laughs> Glammy loves little th artwork. Oh my god, that was just the best. Chibis. <laughs> Big eyed anime chibis. He is great. I love it. <laughs> I think the Crit Master needs to be a shirt. <laughs> that was in your chat. That went along, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. No. I think it's an awesome idea. Just have some Batman crit, 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 crit in the background. <laughs> Just have a big mug of GB right in the front. Mm, there you go. Are, are we getting the same viewers in both? Or do you think it's different viewers in each of the streams? Different, it's but different. then when the after show, some of them come over. So how and many then... are in during the show for Colonels? Uh, I don't know. It's usually like two to three. I mean, I get probably about a dozen drop-ins. And then they drop out, or they drop in, say something inappropriate, and then drop out. <laughs> but, you know, it's it's usually... I, last week, I think we... Or the last time I had was streaming, I think we had like six or seven people in there. It was pretty cool. Yeah. And, we, and that we was hit, on Beam? Or yeah. Beam or, something? or Mixer now. Yeah. Oh, we, we hit... Uh, um, oh, jeez. We hit 17 tonight over on... Uh, yeah. Lucian's channel. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, that's got to be our highest, I know. Have we ever done that before? Yeah, we have. We've hit. We, for a while there, we were like 15 to 17, like every week. Oh, all right. And so it bounces. There was a, there was a general lull in Twitch for several months. So now we're seeing it kind of straighten back out. It's not bad, yeah, because I still get a bunch of emails about follows, so there's a lot of people hitting the follow button, which is good. Yeah, I've <laughs> there's been so many people following. I don't, I mean, most of them don't come back and actually watch anything, but maybe they watch the VODs. I don't know, but I mean, I over the last month or so, it seems like almost every stream I get like five to ten follows. It's crazy. Pretty good. Yeah, like I said, they're starting to diversify uh, the audience. Everyone was, you know, Twitch was like the only game in town. And then, you know, Beam and YouTube and some others. Yeah. Well, how does it, um, I guess I'll have to go over and look to see how it advertises or promotes people that are on. Like, how do they know you're live or whatever if they're not a follower? I think it's a little easier on Mixer or Beam, whatever you want to call it, because um, there's like there's an RPG not channel or something. Yeah, there's not a lot of D and D stuff, so if you're looking for D and D, it's probably just me that's gonna pop up. Whereas on Twitch, I'm sure there's a lot. Interesting. Not well, really basically, basically on Twitch, if you want to hit front page, you got it. You got to have ten viewers. Otherwise, you are not going to be anywhere near anywhere near where they're going to see you at all. You yeah, know. nobody's going to follow find me on the front page on Beam. <laughs> not not these days. 
Yeah. What would it be? Dungeons and Dragons found it? Oh, that's really low on the list. Wait, what'd you say? No, I'm trying. I'm trying to see where. Oh. It is. There's two people streaming Dungeons and Dragons right now. One of them is Colonel. Another one is someone with. Hey, you both have the same amount of views. GG. <laughs> <laughs> whoop whoop. We'll jump in. Give him one more. That's right. Oh, they actually, they're running a Roll20 also. Apparently on Beam, you can see the stream without clicking on it. Yeah, uh, yeah, you can just hover over it and it'll show you the stream. Uh, yes, I would yeah. like to watch this. Who? Get it. Who yes, is it? this is fucking, oh my god. How, stop telling me it's 18 and over. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, there's two. There's two of them on. Are two people streaming this? Oh, so, yeah, so I was going to say that, but I know that, you know, Lucian, you're on Twitch and that's where you're established, but Beam's got this new co-streaming thing where you can have up to four people streaming on the same screen so you can see different perspectives with one chat. Oh, wow. Wow. So. Did they change your font? I think they did. They changed a <laughs> bunch of things. Oh, or is this just the font? You can change your font? Do you guys not have, like, Times New Roman as your font in Roll20? In Roll20? Mm. Uh, or, like, whatever the fuck that real fancy looking thing is. Because he has, like, Sans Serif, it looks like. I think hmm. you can change the fonts. I can't remember. It's been a while since I've had to mess with it. I think you can change the font somewhere. The second guy I recognize, it's like that's my font. But the first guy, he has Sans Serif. <laughs> Is that like maybe that's like the the font you use for this dyslexia, dyslexia or dyscalculia? I guess in this case. <laughs> <laughs> Easy for you to say. <laughs> well, I've seen it before. I just don't. I don't use it, so I don't recognize it. <laughs> <laughs> so they they changed it to. To Mixer is the name of the yeah thing now. Yeah, it's a it's terrible name. Off. What's the website? It's, it's Mixer.com. Mixer.com. Beam.pro oh. redirects there. Yeah, Somehow got Mixer.com, which amazes me. I I tweeted yeah. the same thing. I was just like, how did they do it? It's like getting right. as it, a as a handle. It could be a dating site. It could be an alcohol site. It could be a bar. It Sound could be, mixers. Yeah, exactly. The, like, yeah, I, the last thing you think of is a streaming service. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which maybe they did that on purpose. <laughs> well, but they had to change the name apparently because they couldn't use Beam in all countries. So they changed it. Uh -huh. But oh, okay. I think they could have come up with something a little better than the mixer. But... <laughs> So what do they do as far as, are they just basically the same thing as it's Twitch the same thing. as far as? Yeah, the same site. They just, just wanted to do the same kind of thing. Yeah. What, Mixer? Yeah. It is it is Beam. It's the same thing. They just rebranded. No, no, no. What, but I mean, what's the difference between it and Twitch? Oh, um, so Mixer has like no delay in chat. Just standard. So Twitch, I think, is like 15 to 30 seconds or something. Unless yep. you're partnered. Yep. Um, and you you can cut it down as a non-partner, but it it will cut about mm, a half to a well a third to a half of the people who can actually watch your stream. Unless you got mega internet, it'll it'll just dump them. They won't be able to keep up on the stream if it's uh, if you go to the higher quality, the lower uh, lag time. Yeah, I, I mean, Glammy, I think was. She was, at one point she was watching my stream, but using your chat. So she yeah. she was like, you know, fifteen thirty seconds ahead of your stream. Yeah, Gl Glamby, I like the fact she watches both. That that's too cool. Glamby's I, awesome. I, could, I I will at some point maybe try to watch both chats. And Just... do you know what like their their thresholds are for? Uh, I guess, I'll say mixer since we that's what they are as far as do they do the same thing where there's not partnered partnered they do have a part different things if you're yeah yeah you have to have I think and glammy I think if you're still in chat cut me if I'm wrong I think it's 500 followers and you have to stream regularly I don't they they've changed the the you know what the requirements are 
but if you've been a member on Beam since like before the beginning of last year, which I think you are, um, then you have the old requirements. I think up until the end of the year or something like that. Huh. I can't remember what it was. Chills, Chills was just talking about it the other day. Because he's trying like to get 30 burned. regular viewers and a certain amount of followers. Yeah, you have to have a certain threshold of viewers that are average in your streams. I think you have to stream like three or f three, four days a week or something like that. And uh, Twitch just came out with the affiliate program, so you can yeah. you can start trying to build your thing and make a couple nickels. Crazy. Yeah, they're they're both yeah. kind of converging. I think. I yep. still think that to get partnered on Twitch is much much harder than it is to get on. Twitch. Yeah, Glammy just shouted it out: seven fifty followers and fifty. Can, uh, Exactly. constant viewers or consent viewers yeah yeah so that's those are the new requirements i think the old ones are like 50 and something a little I less know than how i tell what i have it's like 500 followers and something less than oh on twitch you just scroll up some list yeah it's right above your channel it'll say lucian videos 25 clips collections events followers 50 and then there's uh some more and you're following 15 people oh yeah yeah I didn't see that before. Nice. So I was... I thought about suggesting it, but I know you're established over there, so I didn't say anything. But yeah, if the, the co-stream feature is like... If there was anything yeah, about the rebranding... That's the funny thing. I'm not established anywhere. Oh, well... I, I, just, I mean, if, just if, if you have no qualms... If you have no qualms about moving over to Mixer, I mean, that co-stream thing is pretty sweet. I, I've seen it with... It, it has a maximum of four four streams and they share they all share a chat I don't think you can split them off but you can have you know anywhere from two to four people in there or two to four perspectives hmm something to think about yeah could be neat well it, it's it's not in, uh, is it just a bandwidth issue to just try to stream to more than one service you can well, so you can use like Restream.io or something. There, there was something that somebody was saying, and I don't know if it was Twitch or Beam or both, that if you use like a Restream service, then it doesn't necessarily count toward whatever their partner requirements are. I'm not sure how they know that, but Dracco it just said uh, you have a program actually out there that you can have your stream go to both. Twitch and Mixer at the same time. Yeah, there's a couple. Restream.io is one of them. There's there's at least two or three others that I'm that I've I can't remember the names, but I know that they're out there. Huh. But and then that way it's only taking the bandwidth of the, the initial upload. It's not trying to upload to two different areas. Right. You're you're basically sending your stream to restream and restream and is do it. sending it out to the other two. That makes sense. Or more, right? Or, is it or, just, or it also like does YouTube, YouTube as well. And, yeah, it also does YouTube. Oh, frack, and you can link the chats as well. Okay, oh, you, you can finally do that? Sweet. There was there was a time when you couldn't do that. That's cool. Monster Street. That would, that would rock. I might have to look into it. So I'm using this Scorp bot, which is uh, just a bot for the channel. And it has the ability to consolidate the chats so that you can see the chat from both streams so it, it'll log into both your channels and it'll consolidate the chat into one screen for you so you don't have to worry about dealing with restream.io you can just send your stream to restream and in the background it'll just do its thing and then you can use the, the bot uh, controller to see. tavern bot it's an automated <laughs> chat bot that handles chat for me yeah, you do. <laughs> I try, I try. And if I could get both chats in one, that would even be better. But yeah, so. Interesting. More All right, guys, I got to split. I will see you next week. All right, All right. yeah, we'll yeah. See you next Monday. Have a good one. More things to think about.
Yeah, and I'm, I'm sure they've made a lot of improvements. Last time I think I used Restream was maybe a year ago. Um, and it, it was kind of clunky back then, but I, I know a lot of people are doing it a lot now. What are the big games that are going on there? So, like, Monday night, the top thing is a what? Probably CSGO or something. Or... So it's still the same type of game. Yeah, oh, yeah. it's all... Player unknown is everybody's been playing at, that. At whatever it's called. Web Show 607. Uh, Out something. What? Oh, some dude's got a big old... Like There's a lot of crap out there, too. <laughs> I'm sure that comes with everything. Yeah. <clears throat> all right. Well, I'm going to wrap up the after hour show. Uh, I guess all we'll right. see you guys all next week. Uh, real quick. Dratko said um, uh, his thing for um, he posted it for Discord is up there. I copied it. If you guys want to contact him about any of that tech stuff, you you can get a hold of him on Ask Me and I'll throw it out or copy it now and then glammy also said i'd love to help uh lucian i'm good at this modding thing she is so, oh god yeah anybody wants to do any of that she stuff, is she's very you're good. already hired <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't know how to do any of that stuff i know how to turn the obs button on yeah. at this point <laughs>